Taking it back to the basics again today, and another one of the most important things that you need to find what fits you in the OR is the surgical mask. Right next to the surgical glove, which is also very important and you need to find what, uh, what fits you well, the mask, I mean, that, that thing is on your face all day long, pretty much, except for when you're on break or walking around the hallways or something. But uh, you gotta find what works, you gotta find what fits well, what uh, is non-abrasive to your skin, and what doesn't fog up your, your lenses. Let's get through it. Welcome back to another Surgical Tech Tips video. We are talking about masks today, and I wanna take you guys through all the masks that we use at our facility, um, starting with the mask that you should not use if you are scrubbed in in the OR. Um, this mask, I, I don't know if a lot of other hospitals have them. I would say this mask, as well as masks that have um, just the ear loops on the side of the mask, where you can just loop it around your ears and the mask sits over your face. Those types of masks are not designed for surgical use. Uh, I see a lot of anesthesiologists that, that use this. Personally, I, I mean, they got rid of all of the ear loop masks at our hospital. We, they were trying to get rid of this mask, but they got a lot of backlash from our, a lot of our anesthesiologists and stuff like that. So they had to keep it around. It doesn't properly uh, it doesn't properly cup your cup your face and, and under your chin as as a tie back mask would. So if you are in surgery and you are doing surgery, you're at the field. The mask that you should be wearing is a proper tie back mask. It's it's got ties at the top, ties at the bottom. You're going to be tying them on the top and bottom of your head and I'll show you guys how to do the how to do the tie properly as well in this video now the majority of the masks that you will find tie back masks that you'll find in the OR will have this foam stripping and as you can see there's there's differences in uh, in thickness of the foam stripping and this foam stripping is actually it's called a fog free foam stripping and it's supposed to help prevent your, your glasses fogging up, um, you know, your safety glasses, your regular glasses, whatever, whatever shield, whatever you're using uh, per se. Um, so this foam is designed to help prevent the fogging and it's, it's also a non-abrasive foam so it's, it's, you know, gentle to your skin. Uh, I personally don't like it because my lenses still fog up when I use them. So the fog-free uh, the fog-free mask that I use is this one, and this one actually has, uh, it's, it's got like a film. It's not a sticky film, it's, it's just like a thin plastic uh, film that goes over your nose. And for some reason, this, this really works well for me. It doesn't work for everybody. That's why you gotta try these masks out when you get out there in the field. And that's why it's important to find what, what works. Uh, some people that I know use this. This comes with uh, wax paper on the inside because this is actually adhesive. And this will actually stick to the bridge of your nose. <clears throat> I find this very abrasive. I used this for a while and it's great for keeping the fog out because this is basically like putting tape around your nose and taping the, the mask to your face. So really no air escapes above uh, above your your nose the bridge of your nose into your goggles so it's great for fog free but I found it very abrasive to, to, my, to the bridge of my nose and it would always be red and I'd be like pulling off skin and stuff like that it was just it was just not not a pleasant mask to have some of the masks that we have have shields attached to them as you could see and this is a great feature if you don't have glasses, security glasses, or if you just don't like wearing them and you prefer a shield, uh, this works great. And it comes with a fog-free uh, foam strip as well. So what works, works if you like the shield. We've got some regular old, regular masks. No fog, no nothing in there. Uh, if you just want something comfortable, non-abrasive, 
to open up your room, you know, this is this is the type of mask for you. If if that's what you really uh, if that's what you really want. Me personally, I just I stick with one mask and I wear that mask all the time, and that's the uh, the fog free with the plastic. Now this mask, this is an important mask. This is your N95 respirator mask. Some of you out there may know about this, some of you may not. Uh, this is for tuberculosis patients, TB patients. If you have a patient that comes into the OR and it's noted that they have TB, it's important for you that you wear this mask. And actually every year, we have to get tested for TB. Obviously, you get the little shot in your arm and they check it you know, within 48 hours or then after, after 48 hours. But not only do they do that, but you have to size your respirator mask to your face. So they have a regular size, a large size, a small size. They have different sizes because it's absolutely important that this seals to your face perfectly. And that's the reason why they test you every single year to make sure that you're the same size respirator mask. You do not want any of that uh, airborne TB in the room. If you have a TB patient, any of those airborne particles coming into your, yourself, it's absolutely important. So to put this N95 mask on, it's got two little tapes on the inside. You basically open up the mask Put it on your chin. Separate the tapes a little bit. Put it on your chin. Pull it over your face. In the back. Position, position the, the tapes away from each other. Crease it over the bridge of your nose and gradually push down across your face. To get that seal above your nose and it automatically seals under your chin. It is super, super uncomfortable to wear this mask. And if you have a TB patient, it is, it is painful being in that case. And I hope it's not a long case. You're like, it, it's, it's, so, it's sealed so tight that you're just constantly, oh God. I, you're like your whole face is sweating underneath this mask. It's it sucks But it's safe and that's important So let's go over proper technique on uh, putting this tie mask on your face So personally, you know when you get the mask out of the box, it's flat. I like to open it up and kind of crease where I want my nose to be. I'll put my nose right in that crease, pull down the mask underneath my chin, and take the top strings up over the top of my head and tie the drawstring. Now I won't tie it too tight, and I'll show you why. Take these back behind your neck, underneath your ears, and again, we're tying it tight, but not too tight. Now your nose already has that pre-crease that we put in, but it's important to push it down again and crease it down over your face. This will give you that nice seal, and when you put your glasses on and you have that fog-free uh, lining underneath the mask, it'll keep that seal so it won't fog up your glasses. Now, that is the way a mask should be. It should be nice, up against your chin, up against your neck, and sealed across the top of your face. The only openings are right here in the sides. That's the proper way to put on a, a tie mask. To take them off, you don't, even need to, uh, you don't even need to untie them. You can just break them. The drawstrings are not tough at all. It's very easy to just break them off, get the mask, throw it away. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, thank you for sharing, commenting, liking, everything. I love and, and, and enjoy talking to you guys uh, through messages and comments. And uh, 
I hope you guys find a mask that works for you. See you again.